can do it. You can do it. We all can do it. Uh, it's not too difficult that we can't accomplish it. It's not too far out that we can't achieve it or reach it. It's within reach. It's available. It's ready. God knows best for you. Would you not agree? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So if he knows best for us, why do we try to argue with him? Yeah. Just do what he calls you to do. Amen. Some of you are called to work in the workforce, be a paymaster, hallelujah, to the kingdom of God. Some of you are called to preach the gospel. Some of you are called to go uh, as missionaries and do missionary work at home or in abroad. Some of you are called to do various things. Well, we must hear the call of God. Just like we heard the call for salvation, we must hear the call of God for our life. Amen. Right? You want to be in the will of God, right? The perfect will of God. Amen. Along the lines of uh, our talking on uh, judgment, not in a negative sense, but still in the sobering sense, is that is, there is a day of reckoning. There is a day that we'll stand before him. And then if he has called us to do something and we've missed that call, then we'll have to give an account. How, however, I believe for better things for you that you hear the call of God and do it. You don't make excuses. You don't uh, put it aside for other activities in your life. You do what God's called you to do. Hallelujah. In John the 10th chapter, let's look there. John the 10th chapter, very familiar chapter and very familiar verses. But good to review, as Willie said, I can't hear it too many times. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I've read the Bible through for years. I don't know how many years. Um, and uh, I've studied the Bible alongside of reading it through all those years. Still studying it, still reading it through. And I always learn something new whenever I do that. Yes, sir. It's an amazing thing that this word is alive. It is. Amen. It's not like seeing the movie twice. No. <laughs> it's not like reading a novel twice. Nope. This is alive. This word is alive. Amen. And every time I delve into it, I'm blessed. Yes. yes. I see something I didn't see before. Amen. And it's always good things. It's always exciting things. Yes, Chapter 10, verse 1. Verily, verily, Jesus talking. Truly, truly, I say to you, he that entereth not, in by the do entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Amen. Verse 2. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. <laughs> now we know who that is. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. Yeah. Hear what I'm saying? Yeah. The sheep, that's us, yeah. hear his voice. Are you listening this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he calleth. I told you, every one of us have a call on our lives. He calleth. Hallelujah. His own sheep by name. And leadeth them out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's good news. Yes, it is. It's good news the fact that God can, He knows your name to call you by name. Amen. Right? Yes, I mean, I'm not just a number to God. Right? right? Yeah. I'm not 453582 <laughs> in the kingdom of God. <laughs> he knows me as Chuck. He says, hey, Chuck, and I respond, right. hallelujah. hallelujah, and he calls me by name and leads me out, Amen. out of what, out of bondage, out of destruction, out of harm's way, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. out of poverty, out of lack, Glory. out of sickness, out of disease, uh -huh. out of the curse that's on this earth, yes. glory to God. And when he, verse 4, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goes before them. You can do what God's called you to do because he's gone before you. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. It's not too difficult for you. 
It's not uh, something you cannot obtain. It is available. If God didn't have confidence in you, he wouldn't have called you to it. He knows your name. He knows what you're capable of. And when he calls you, he knows you can do it. But you're going to do it in his strength, not what you think. Hallelujah. Verse 4, when he put it forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. That's us, following Amen. him. Mm -hmm. For they know his voice. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And a stranger they will not follow, mm -hmm. right. but will flee from the stranger. Mm -hmm. yes. For they know not the voice of strangers. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? The Holy Ghost is saying to you, he's got a call on your life. Amen. It's an important call because God sanctioned that call. God appointed that call. You're special to him. He knows you by name. He's taken you by the hand. He's called your name and said, hey, put your name in. Come on out. Come on out of the world. Come on out of sickness. Come on out of poverty. Come on out of lack. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. The call of God is upon you. Amen. Just listen yes. and hear his voice. Mm -hmm. Don't hear the voice of pain. Mm -hmm. Don't hear the voice of sorrow. Don't hear the voice of rejection. Mm -hmm. Don't hear the voice of a pity party. Right. Don't hear these voices because they're strangers. Mm -hmm. And we don't follow those. Right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, in the book of John, turn over to John, the second chapter. I love this. This is Jesus' mother. Hallelujah. And I would say she knew him quite well, wouldn't you? Mom knows her son, right? Um, so she's got some words of wisdom for us here. Praise the Lord. John 2. And this is where they needed some wine at the wedding. Hallelujah. And... So mom asked him, said, you know, we need you. And he says to her in verse 4, my hour is not yet come, mom. You know, you're asking me this, but it's not yet time. But mom just rolled right over that. You know how moms are good at that. <laughs> Didn't even pay any attention to that. What? <laughs> and just looked at him and said, whatever he says to you, do it. Ha! <laughs> Glory to God. Because she knew her boy. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, now, here's the key in that, though. Is that to you, the Lord is saying to you, whatever he says to you, do it. Now, listen up. Whatever. He said, she, she said to the servants at the wedding, whatever Jesus says to you, do it. And it'll work. Hallelujah. Amen. And he took water, and they thought, hmm, this is just water, until they began to pour it out. Right. And then it was the better wine than at the beginning. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. So, with this calling of God in your heart, in your life, that you hear, whatever he's saying to you, do it. <laughs> and let him deal with the obstacles involved. Yes. Yes. Okay? Look in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Are you with me this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not snoring out there, right? Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 14, I mean 13 says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. In other words, it's not unique. If you're going through it, somebody else has already been through it. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. The picture is here that not God doing it to you, not tempting you. But that he is there with you in the temptation. He's your strength in the temptation. Okay? It will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also 
Make a way to escape. That you may be able to bear it. Now the reason that I'm telling you this is that God will make a way. I mean, just that little phrase inside of that verse there. Now, that inside that verse, it's, it's applicable in that it says, when you find yourself in trial and temptation, number one, it's not God putting more on you than you can handle or not putting more on you than you can handle. That's what a lot of people quote. It's not that at all. But the devil has put that on you or your flesh has brought it about, but something's happened other than God. And God is there with you, not leaving you, not forsaking you. Yeah. Standing there with you. Yeah. And he's not just standing there with you to uh, watch how the outcome is going to be. Thank God for that. But he is pointing to the way he's made. Hallelujah. Amen. God is the way maker. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. 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 A way to escape the problem. He brings us out because we follow him because we know his voice. Right? Isn't that what we just read? Here we're coming out of that temptation. We're coming out of that trial. We're coming out of that mess. Because he's made a way of escape. Thank you, Jesus. Look in 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. That's back here with the T's. 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, 1 Thessalonians. I'm going backwards. 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 5, verse 24 says, Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. There's no possibility here, no stuttering, no <laughs> maybe he'll do it, or if you do this or that right, he'll do it. It said, Faithful is the one who called you. Faithful is he to do it. Amen. To finish the calling. To complete it. Thank you, Lord. To perfect it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now this calling is for everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone who hears. Look in Acts, the second chapter. Acts chapter 2. And verse 39. For the promise is unto you yes. and to your children yes. and to all that are afar off, yes. even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Yes. So the promise, these promises we're reading, yes. are to all the called, yes. the called of God. Yes. Who's called? Yes. We're all called. Yes. Just that we've responded. Yes. Hallelujah. The whole world is called, but they've not responded, all of them. I know you may have witnessed to people in your life, and that's God calling them, and they don't hear it. Well, don't give up. Nope. Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. Praise the Lord. You are the called of God. And because you're the called of God, nothing is too hard for you. Nothing is too difficult for you. Whatever calling he's called you to, he's going to perform in your life. Amen. He's going to do it. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you. Ephesians 1, verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Amen. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, opened. When light comes on, I can see, yeah. right? Yeah. If you turn the light off and it's dark outside, I can't see. I may stumble over a chair or the, the step up here or something. But when the light comes on, I can see. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. 
that you may know what is the hope of his calling. There you go. God wants you to see what he's called you to do so that you can walk in it. You can do what God's called you to do because you're empowered by the Holy Ghost to do it. Not from your own might, not from your own ability. And he says he wants your eyes of your understanding to be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of this calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And then he goes on, what is the exceeding greatness of this power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which was that he raised Christ from the dead. Now, if he can raise a man from the dead, hallelujah. I don't think anything in your life is too difficult for him to deal with. Praise the Lord. Although it may seem that way to you at the present time, I understand. Look with me. Let's look at what the general calling is. I, there is a specific calling to every woman. There's also a general calling. Okay. We're going to look at the general calling because we're not one-on-one -on -one where we can sit down and, and go through your specific calling. But you have a specific calling. And I encourage you to move in that calling, to pursue it, to walk in it. But there's a general calling that applies to all of us. Look in Romans, the first chapter. I just want to encourage you today. You are the called of God. You heard his voice. You followed him out. Hallelujah. He's made a way of escape for you, and you walk in it. You have escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Second Peter says, we have already escaped it. Thank you, Jesus. Romans, the first chapter. Verse 6 says, among whom are you also the called of Jesus Christ? And that qualifies us all. We are the call of Jesus Christ. Do you see that? Is that in your Bible? Yes, sir. It's not just in my King James, right? It's in everybody's Bible. Verse 7 says, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be what? Saints. Hallelujah. You're a saint. But you say, well, I don't feel like a saint. I didn't act like a saint yesterday. I didn't act like a saint this morning when I got up. Maybe you're saying that. I don't know. Doesn't matter how you feel because whom God calls, faithful is he that calls you to do it. Amen. Call yourself a saint. Say, I'm a saint. I'm a saint. I'm a saint. I'm a saint. Why, why can we have the authority to say that? I mean, that really rubs the religious feathers the wrong way. Because they, ooh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Right, Pastor. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. But here it says, verse 7, we are called to be saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Look in 2 Peter. Let's go there. 2 Peter. We're talking about the general callings that's applicable to everyone. There are specifics. You have to hear that specific and pursue it. But these are general. If you can't get the general, you won't get to the specific. I can tell you that. Second right. Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things. How many things? All, all things. All things that pertain unto life and to godliness. Reminds me of John 10, 10. He came to give us life and life more abundantly. Amen. Through the knowledge of him... That had called us, that have called us to what? Glory and virtue. We are called to be saints. We are called to glory and virtue. Praise the Lord. So while you're in Peter, look over to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 9. You are a chosen generation. I'm talking about you, church. Hallelujah. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. 
that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you, who had called you, who had called you to what? Out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. <laughs> I am called out of darkness into the light, the marvelous light. Thank you, Jesus. This is good news. Amen. Okay, still in 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, that's the voice of the stranger, but contrarywise, blessing. Now look at this. Knowing that you are there unto call, that you should inherit a blessing. Ha! I'm called to inherit blessings. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my goodness. I tell you, it gets better. First Corinthians. We're talking about general callings for everybody. First Corinthians. Chapter 1. I hope you'll read it along with me in your Bible so you won't think I'm just uh, telling you these things. I didn't make them up. They're right here in the Word of God. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. God is faithful. And we saw that somewhere before, didn't we? Mm -hmm. God is faithful by whom you were called. What was I called to? Called unto the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Do you know you were called to have fellowship yeah. with Jesus? Amen. That's friendship, isn't it? That's, that's walking and talking with him. That's companionship. That's right. Hallelujah. What a blessing. This is God we're talking about. I'm called to the fellowship of his son Jesus. Amen. Well, let's look at that a little further. John 15. John 15, verse 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. You're called to be a friend of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 15, 15. I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father have made known unto you. Amen. Now we read in James the second chapter, verses 22 to 23, that Abraham was a friend of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of his faith. Right. You are a friend of God Amen. because Jesus called you. Amen. He wants a friend. He's looking for a friend this morning. Amen. And he's called you to fit the Feel the bill. Amen. That's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't know, like when you was a little kid and you saw this kid in this classroom, you thought, well, that looks like he'd be fun to play with and, you know, go do things with. Him. So he calls you up. Well, I want to be your friend. You know, praise God. I mean, that's a natural way to look at it. But God from heaven has picked you out and said, I love you. I want to be friends. Amen. I've called you to friendship, Hallelujah. fellowship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Look in Romans, the eighth chapter. Praise the Lord. I'll move right along when you're having fun. Romans, the eighth chapter. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. You are justified today. Amen. Because you're the called of God. Yeah. Just if if just if I had never sinned. Amen. And along those same lines, Romans 8, 28, just back up. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called Amen. according 
to his purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. That's good news. It's good news. Praise the Lord. But what do, what do we what do we need to do in this? Look at Philippians. Hurry. Philippians chapter three, because we're out of time. Philippians chapter three. And verse 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What I got to do? I got to pursue it. I got to pursue Him is what I got to do. And when I pursue Him, then He unfolds it. He speaks to me. I hear Him. He calls me to do what He's called me to do. All these things plus specifics. And I hear Him and I respond to that because I'm friends with Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends with God Almighty. Wow. Well, still in Ephesians. I mean, back in Ephesians. Go to Ephesians. Chapter 4. Praise the Lord. Verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Now, how do I walk worthy of it? By faith. That I believe that he, all these things I just said, that I take them at face value. I don't try to explain them away. I am a saint. I am justified. I am a friend. I am called out of the world system, out of sickness, out of darkness, into his marvelous light. I am all those things because I am, says I am. Amen. And so in order to walk worthy of it, that's what I do is I believe. I take it at face value. I don't try to explain it away with theological doctrine Amen. or circumstantial evidence. But I take the word over everything else. Amen. That's what we have to train ourselves to do. So. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your high calling, Lord, on each of our lives. Thank you, Lord God, that we hear your voice and respond following you, Lord. And we flee from the stranger's voice because we know your voice and your voice is the one we respond to, the voice of love. And we thank you, Lord, that you called us to be friends. And we bask in this privilege, this great privilege that we can be friends with you. Amen. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord, that this morning, even as I speak and pray for these precious people this morning, Lord, that you... Just encourage them in the calling that God has placed on their heart. Amen. Father, some you've called to preach. Some you've called to, to uh, just witness. Some you've called to fund the gospel by being an entrepreneur or a wealthy businessman or woman. Father, I don't know the calling, but you know the calling. I pray you encourage these people in that calling this morning, Lord. That you strengthen them by the power of your might in this calling that you've given them. That no discouragement, no voice of discouragement will be followed in their life any further, Lord. That they'll pursue exactly what you said to do in face of all violence. And we know, Father God. That because you're the caller, you're the one who's calling, faithful are you to do it. You said so in your word. And we rest in that. We don't try to tell you how to do it. We don't try to make it come about on our own. We just rest in you by faith. And we just rebuke all condemnation that would try to tell us we're not doing right. We're not doing enough. And we hear your voice saying, all things are working together for our good because we love you and we are the call according to your purpose. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for it, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are the call of God. Praise the Lord. Well, we bless.